Hi there and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're feeling okay, we've got a super chill video today. The bullet journal is out and we're going to be setting up the April spread. This month's theme is all about flowers, springtime, collaging, lots of colour and it's going to be a lot of fun. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's journal. Originally, April's theme was going to be spring, a little bit more ambiguous. Until I looked in my paper and sticker collection and found so many floral designs. Honestly, like a postage stamp sticker of berries or craft paper with butterflies on, they still had flowers. And lots of my washi tapes have flower elements as well. Plus, they're all such similar colours that they're automatically kind of themed. I mean, I picked them all, so obviously I like them. Even when I was aiming for pastel pieces and vintage style papers, they just appeared. It's more the fact that even designs that aren't floral based still sneakily have little flowers in them. This means I have a lot to work with, anywhere from a very floral pattern to completely minimalist. It would be a shame to not use these supplies, so April spread is mostly collage with poskas and some zebra mild liners. For February and March we painted with gouache, which was really fun, don't get me wrong, but it's nice to try something a little different. I think I got a bit put off from using zebra mild liners and brush markers right at the beginning. It's what I used for the January and 2024 spreads. I guess most people start by drawing and then lean into painting, whilst I was the opposite. I actually had around three watercolour sketchbooks on the go before deciding to finally get a pencil sketchbook, which I call my messy sketchbooks. I had an old starter Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolour palette, which still stands today. It's a really good palette and I completely recommend if you're interested in starting with watercolour. And then I had WH Smith colour pencils, which I presume are the equivalent to something like Hobby Lobby in the United States. I honestly thought that these were fancy pencils for so long. It's only when I probably started using them that I realised they couldn't handle much. They really don't layer. I ordered several Caran d'Ache Luminance and Faber-Castell Polychromos from Jackson's probably over a year ago now. And I've never looked back. To be fair, now that I have Neo colours though, the amount of pigment you can put down with those is crazy, even in comparison to those amazing pencils, which says a lot about Neo colours. I am a big fan. Because my watercolour palette was better than the equivalent colour pencils, that's just what I used. So when I tried to use pens for the 2024 and January setup, which you might have seen, it didn't feel natural. Plus, because most of the time for bullet journal plan with me videos, all you see is other people using pens, I compared myself to them. My line work is not confident, I'm not good at drawing with fine liners, and I can't do fancy handwriting. That's why I moved on to paint, it's more natural for me. My videos can't be directly compared to too many other bullet journal videos if I use paint. Today though, we're moving back to pens a little, giving them another try. Poskas are pretty forgiving though, as long as you don't accidentally smudge them, which is very easy to do because they are in fact paint. They're so easy to draw and write with that honestly, I forget that. I really do forget that they are actual acrylic paint markers and they're not just random pigment like alcohol. Collaging is really fun too. I did scrapbooking as a child and had multiple books. It wasn't serious, I had no plan, and I didn't intend on anyone ever seeing them. They weren't even proper journals that you see nowadays. The coloured paper that I'm ripping from in those craft paper books you can see, that's what I used. They were about a pound each and I have so many of them that I'm now actually using them as they were intended as craft paper. I didn't even know that what I was doing was called scrapbooking. I just collected papers and envelopes and tags from clothing, whatever rubbish I could find. Plus I had a few floral paper designs that I picked up in the shop, but most of it was junk and I just stuck in various pieces. 
I'm just remembering now, I actually used glitter glue. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. I had actual glitter and PVA glue, plus those glue pens with lots of different colored glitter, and they were really fun. They worked so well. What's sad is that I think I stopped collaging or scrapbooking because someone said, aren't I a little bit too old to be doing that? I guess I was like 13. It's ridiculous, really. For me, art was an escape. It still is. So maybe I've been using art as a form of therapy for much longer than I thought. Now that I'm somewhat older and wiser, let me tell you. If you want to create art in any form, do it. There's no age limit for creating art. Nobody is ever too young or too old to do it. And if you've never tried collaging, please give it a go. It's great fun and it's also pretty cheap to begin with. You can literally just get some glue and save whatever paper rubbish you find. The stuff would be going in the bin anyway, so there's no chance of feeling guilty about wasting supplies. Which is often the case when you start getting more expensive products. I know that especially when it comes to the watercolour paper and paint that I get now. It really does make a difference. And I have talked about this before, I'll leave the video down below. Okay, this actually just reminded me of something. So often you'd think it would be so-called friends or family that would say this kind of thing to a child. But when I was in year two at school, so around six, I had really lovely flowy handwriting. I joined up the letters and it was completely legible. I worked really hard on it and it was really pretty. I did all my schoolwork and the teacher came up to me and said, you're too young to be joining up your handwriting like that. You can't do that until you're older. Firstly, like, what? So I had to get rid of this lovely flowy handwriting that I'd developed and force myself to write more like a child so I fit in with everyone else's. And then come year four, when I was around eight, the same teacher started teaching us how to join up our letters because now I was old enough to do so. Obviously I didn't, out of spite. <laughs> and I've never completely joined up my handwriting since. I think that's just such a dumb thing to say to a child, I mean to anyone really. Children have so much potential and are often put back in their place to make it easier to manage them and honestly it's really sad. Don't let anyone change your art or put you off creating. It's relaxing and it can be really good for your mental health and your physical health, I mean they're both interlinked. So I started collaging again in January for that setup, and then I've been doing a lot in my daily doodle diary. It's an absolutely crazy challenge that I'm taking part in, where I attempt to draw something every single day of 2024. So far, I've not missed a day, but obviously we do have like literally the entire rest of the year left. The first video is out and I'll leave that one down below. It's a really fun one. The main reason I'm using collaging for this challenge is because it's in a diary. So the paper is thin, cheap, blind paper. It's good, it means there's no pressure to create something really good. But it does mean that pretty much every medium goes through the page. Like even zebra mild liners. Highlighters, fine liners, biros, poscas, I mean watercolour does. It's gotten to the point where I see the left and right sides as different, and it's only been a few months. On the right side, I'm free to use whatever I like, and then on the left side, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with the bleed through, and choose a medium that won't go through the page and onto the piece I've already created. So collaging is the best way to cover up this bleed through and not create any more. The stickers and papers that I'm using for this spread are from Stationery Pal and Timu. I will leave the playlist down below for both hauls. I also have codes and affiliate links in the description too if you're looking to buy some new supplies and save some money. The Posca paint markers were really fun. I really want to get some more acrylic markers but I haven't been able to purchase any yet. Because I have the Posca starter set, some of the colours are pretty basic, they're not really unique at all. 
They're also quite bright and bold, and sometimes that just doesn't fit with the theme that I have in mind. I see acrylic brush markers everywhere now, and I would love to try them. I do like drawing with a brush tip, and obviously have more experience using a paintbrush than anything else, so I think these could be really good for me. Hopefully I'll get some in future. Honestly, I think this might be my favourite theme yet, just because we had so much to work with. Plus, stickers are a lot more forgiving than drawing or painting. Because the camera and tripod is literally right in front of me, I'm working behind and around a tripod, and I'm quite far away so I can't really see the page very well. It can be quite difficult to draw, and that's probably why the January spread was so hard for me. Plus, using stickers and papers, I love the whole aesthetic of this video. I find collaging really relaxing to watch, and I enjoy editing it. I think it's quite a fun video visually. I hope that comes across for you too, and I hope you're enjoying this one. I have a lot of ideas for the rest of the year, and if I do bullet journaling again next year, which is crazy to think of, I won't be repeating any themes so some will naturally become a little bit more specific than others, and they won't be as broad as floral. Some themes for the rest of the year are quite specific though, so I'm not sure how I'll be piecing them together. Underwater sea creatures is one of the summer prompts that I'm super excited for. I think that's going to be a really fun one. I got some fishy stickers for that theme, and I'm not sure about the rest. It would be cool to colour the entire page blue with watercolour and make some water blooms so it actually looks like it's underwater, but I think the pages would warp a lot. Still, it could be worth it, they might flatten over time, I might be able to pop it under some books. Or we could go darker, we could paint something like indigo and then write on top with a white gel pen or a Posca and go for a really dark theme. Plus, using more pigment and less water could really help with warping. For every spread, my aim is to use lots of different mediums and try different styles of art and handwriting. Unfortunately, my handwriting often looks very similar because I've never done calligraphy or any kind of fancy text before. I think that's where it's lacking. My handwriting is inconsistent and it doesn't fit the rest of the style that I'm trying to create for the monthly themes but we're just going to continue having fun. It's completely random and the themes will become more unique as time goes on. We are experimenting and I'd love to see you again for the future spreads, so subscribe if that sounds like something you're into. The theme for May is witchcraft and I can't wait for that setup. I have a brand new medium for us to try. It's a little bit risky but hopefully it will go well. I'm thinking of a dark, spooky colour palette, so it will really stand out against April. I've got some stickers as well that I think will really fit that theme, so I'm looking forward to that. I think next month's is going to be really fun. Thank you for being here with me, I really appreciate it. If you made it to the end, comment a spooky emoji to get in the mood for next month's spread. I hope you found this relaxing, look after yourself, and I'll see you on Thursday for a new video. Bye-bye.